All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're working on the frog. Since the last time you saw it, nothing has really happened. It hasn't so much as turned a wheel. Not because it's not fun, but because of those rear tires. They look great, but spiky tires really don't last very long when there's enough power to spin them up. They'll wear down in no time. We don't really want to swap just the tires though, as those beadlock wheels are just a little bit of a pain to put together. We can't just swap for a modern cheat wheel either, because the frog uses a large dry flange rather than a more typical 12mm hex. If only there was some sort of adapter. Well, here we have a Tamiya 53913 aluminum wheel adapter. A shame they couldn't use real aluminium, but I'm sure they'll work out okay. So, now we've got these adapters, we need some wheels. 2.2 truck wheels would fit, but they're just a little bit on the big side. They'd really mess up the final drive ratio, and I think they might just compromise the performance a little. Oddly enough, 1.9 truck wheels and the old Tamiya tyres aren't that far off, just a little bit narrow. I'd bet they'd work pretty well somewhere with lots of grip. More modern rear wheel drive buggy wheels would be pretty good. This one's for a lossy double X. Unfortunately, it uses a drive pin rather than a hex, so it won't work. Also, these ones are a little bit worn out. But something similar with pin spikes could be a fairly cheap and easy swap. In the end, I found these from FTX. The outside of the tyre has a nice bit of sidewall, and they're white and spoky. Almost the same as the stock ones, except they're six rather than five spoke, but they won't stand out too much against the front ones. The wheels are for an FTX Comet, a range of one twelfth scale buggies and trucks. They're fairly cheap to get hold of, and should work well enough. Now, since swapping the wheels isn't going to take very long to do, we're also going to swap the aluminium pinion for a brass one. These two are from High Moto. They're both 0.8 module, one is 16 tooth and the other 18. Others are available too, but these two will replace the small and medium pinions with something that's going to last a bit longer than the stock ones. Ok, let's have a closer look at the wheels. They're about 12 quid a pair, so quite affordable. They have a bit of a rally car type tread pattern to them rather than spikes, and the rubber is quite firm, but it's thin enough to still be flexible. Even skidding around on a road surface, they're going to last quite a long time. I'm not expecting all that much in the way of grip, but hopefully it'll be enough to control the slides. To fit them, we need the Tamiya adapter kit. Now the aluminium bits replace the stock plastic drive flanges, moving the wheels outwards and allowing for a hex drive. They also come with a pair of new drive pins and two low profile M4 nylock nuts. If we stick one into a wheel, you can see how far they're going to space the wheel off from the pin. Quite neat. Unfortunately, it's not something that you could really 3D print, or even just make from plastic. The adapters are going to get twisted by all the torque driving the wheels. The adapters do come with some instructions. A single small sheet. Essentially, all we need to do is remove the stock wheel and dry flange, pop an adapter on with your wheel of choice, then install a nut. So here we go, we're going to remove the wheel nut and wheel. Pull the drive flange off, being careful not to lose the drive pin. But out of curiosity, we'll compare the stock drive pin with one from the adapter kit. And yes, they're exactly the same. So they've just included a couple of spares, which is nice. Before we reassemble, we'll give the suspension a quick wipe down. It really caught a lot of dust on that last run out in the woods. And there we go, that looks a bit better. Now we can pop a pin into the axle, install an adapter, offer up a wheel, and wind on one of the new nuts. I've got a feeling, since there's not a lot of thread sticking out, if you use one of the stock nuts or a typical wheel nut, the nylon isn't going to reach the thread, so the nut isn't really going to want to stay on. I think we're going to need to find a supplier of these low profile ones. I'm guessing they'll come up as nylock half nuts. I'll have to do a bit of research. Now we just do the same on the other side, it's a very simple swap. We'll need to test out some other wheel tyre combos too, but these FTX ones are a good start. If you've got any ideas of cheap wheel tyre combos, answers on a postcard, or just leave a comment below. So there we go then, the buggy's lost a little bit of its identity without the spiky tyres, but we'll be able to give it the beans without wearing out the stock tyres. 
Right, body off for the next bit. We need to change out the pinion for a brass one. Just like the wheel adapters, it's a really quick swap. We need to unscrew the two screws and pull the motor. Then using a small Allen key, loosen the grub and remove the pinion. Next, just to be sure it's going to fit OK, we're going to compare the pinions. The new one is a little bit wider, which should be OK. The teeth are a bit wider too, which should also be OK. As long as it'll go far enough onto the motor shaft, it should be a straight swap. In the frog manual, we have a nice dimension for the outside of the pinion to the motor can. We need to make sure it's 16.5 millimeters or just a hair less, but no more. The easiest thing to do is set a vernier and use the depth gauge. The pinion should be not quite touching the base of the vernier and the base of the pinion should be clear of the bearing housing on the motor. Turns out these high moto pinions are absolutely perfect. Now we can reinstall the motor. Now it's worth noting if you're going to be using the fiber spacer washer widget, you're going to need to include that in the measurement. It's only thin, but it would make the difference between having a good pinion placement and having something catch. The body goes back on now and we've got the first upgrades to the frog done. We're not going to be worried about wearing out the tires anymore and the pinion should now last near enough forever. Right, time for a test. The plan was to run around the loose dirt for a bit, get some video sliding around, doing some jumps and skids. I was also going to do a bit of bombing around at a skate park, but there was lots of kids off school, and of course it's full of kamikaze scooters, and trying to film would have been a bit of a faff. In the end though, it wasn't really an issue, as you'll see at the end. I found on the dirt the new tyres really aren't much worse than the stock spiky ones. If anything, they might be just slightly better. I'm guessing on grass though, they're going to be pretty terrible. Just before packing up in the woods, I decided to pop the run cam on the roof and get a bit of onboard video. Literally after just a couple of jumps, this happened. Yeah, the wheel fell off. It doesn't look like it's broken as such, it's just the stub axle has pulled out of the upright. It's got a spline on the end, but as far as I can see, it's just a press fit, which really isn't brilliant. Still, it gives us something to try and fix next time. It's possible on one of the not so good landings, it distorted something, but we will see in another video. We might end up just having to replace it. So there we go then. Not quite what I planned, but that's how it goes more often than not. As always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!